All toy restorations will be handled by the YouTubers controlling each gem. Reproduction parts may not be used where there are Star Wars forms. Toy restorers and collectors are available. Toy Poloi has been assigned. Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at repairing this vintage Action Force armored troop carrier by Palatoy. Now, this was a lucky find for me. I went into a charity shop one day near where I live and uh, they happened to have this in a cabinet to one side. It was on sale for £10 because it has a fair amount of damage and wear to it. I grabbed it though because it's not one that I see particularly often. And when I opened it up, it even had some figures and weapons inside. But as you can see, it's not in an amazing state in fact if you look at it closely there's bits missing and bits broken it's also covered in paint and all sorts of things so it's going to be quite a project to uh, get this back up into a displayable state so let's take a closer look at what needs fixing and then we can uh, get to work on restoring and repairing it so here we go, this is the armoured troop carrier. It's a reworked version of a G.I. Joe toy. Uh, and the idea is it can be this sort of vehicle that rides around, you can take the back off and put figures inside it, or it can be a carry case where you sort of close that up and then there's a handle on the back of this that pulls out so you can carry all your toys around. As I say, I found this in a charity shop. It was uh, on sale for £10, which I thought was a pretty good uh, deal, even though it is in a fairly sorry state. Uh, and it's gonna be quite a fun project to work on. So what actually needs fixing? Well, you can see straight away we are missing one set of wheels there should be a set of wheels that goes through there also the wheels that are in here uh, the axles have been bent so you could, they don't actually rotate properly so we've got to take those wheels off and get the axles straightened again uh, then if we open this up and take the top off uh, you can see that there is some paint on the inside of here in fact there's an awful lot of paint on this this is going to be the main part of the process there's, so there's a name uh, painted in there a little p so we've got to get the paint off that uh, i think that's all that's wrong with this top section apart from it needs a jolly good clean you'll also see there's some spare parts inside these are things i've picked up recently which i'll show you in a minute uh, but if we take off this front section here you can start to see that there is a lot more paint so we've got paint all around this section here all these black pieces should not be uh, painted black and there's paint up here then there's silver paint on the inside of this piece and then a bit more blue at the front so another letter p this is obviously uh, owned by a child with a p for an initial we can then look inside and you can see on this front section again there's an awful lot of paint all over the dashboard here it does actually have the steering wheel which is quite remarkable but all of this paint needs removing this paint here a child has just gone to town with a silver paint pen there's more paint there there's more paint here we're missing the little bar here that holds the figures in place it does actually have the stretcher as you can see which is in remarkably good condition it's just missing one little clip piece there but again covered in paint then if we turn it over there's more paint on the bottom so we've got paint all around here and in this screw hole and then there's a fair bit of damage on the bottom as well bits sort of snapped off more paint on the inside of this wheel you can see it's just been a well played with toy in fact there's something rattling in there maybe there's something exciting inside We'll find out when we take it apart. So, yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of work to get this looking like a displayable piece. A lot of cleaning, a lot of paint tidying up. Most of the stickers are in uh, reasonable condition, so I will try and save those. But as you saw, I got some spare parts because it is missing wheels, and I did a trade a while back. I've got a spare set of wheels. These are actually in very good condition compared to the ones that are on. The axles are nice and straight, so that's the missing wheel. I also, just because I thought it might come in useful, did a trade for replacement version of the canopy. So this is the canopy we have at the moment. This is the replacement, which doesn't have any paint on it. So um, it may be I just use this one if I can't get the paint off this, but I think we can probably get the paint off most of these. It's just uh, time consuming to do. So uh, first thing to do though, now that we've got everything in pieces, is actually to take it more apart. Uh, there are a few screws on the bottom. So if we unscrew all of these, we should be able to get out this uh, middle section. And then I need to take the wheels off and then we'll give it a good clean and then we can start dealing with all of the paint problems. So um, let me undo a few screws and we'll get this middle section out. And then, yeah, hot soapy water and a toothbrush.
Everything is now clean and I'm moving on to the process of trying to remove the paint that is sort of spread over pretty much every piece of this toy. Now the normal process I would do would be to put the pieces into some brake fluid and let them soak and that will remove the paint. So I've started doing that on a few pieces that are small enough to fit in the brake fluid but some of the pieces as you can see are rather large and some also have stickers on so I don't want to submerge those completely into the brake fluid and with the big ones I just simply can't do it. So I'm trying a new method which I've got to sort of testing down here on this piece this had a P painted on the inside of it and what I've done is I've basically just taken a piece of kitchen towel soaked it in brake fluid and left it resting on top of the paint and I can already see that the paint has started to come off so this is going to be the process I'm going to use to remove the paint from all of the awkward places because you can see the bits inside here on this sort of console or on little pieces all over so yeah I'm just going to soak bits of kitchen towel in brake fluid and lay them onto the areas that I want to remove the paint and then start scraping away it's going to be quite a long process you can see we've got little bits back here on these vents this one I had a go at scraping it out but you can see there's still bits of uh, paint in there so yeah that will be my process brake fluid on some kitchen towel and just rest it onto all of the areas I have a feeling this is going to take quite a few days to do but it will be worth it because I want to get rid of all of this paint if I possibly can
Well, after quite a lot of hours and a lot of scrubbing and reapplying of brake fluid, I think I've got most of the paint off. Here you can see we have the uh, dashboard with the steering wheel. This was absolutely covered in silver paint. And you can see, I think I've probably got about 99% of that off. So that's uh, as clean as it's going to get. I did remove the sticker at one point, just using some lighter fluid to take it off and then put it back on at the end. And that, uh, yeah, I think that is pretty much done. We've got the gun turret here. This had a letter P there. And also if you open the hatch, there was a P on the inside of that. So that is now all gone on the bottom of the vehicle. There was blue all over this. This still has a few little marks left on it, but you know, it's still massively better. And then probably the worst piece was this internal section, which had silver paint all over these grills here. As you can see, that's all gone. Uh, there was silver paint all over these dials here. There's just a little bit of it left. It's really an awkward place to get to but most of that has gone there was silver paint all around here and then dripped all into the side here this whole wall was painted silver and as you can see I've got pretty much all of that removed as well so it's a process that does work using brake fluid and the kitchen towel just to hold it onto the place you don't need to submerge everything you can literally just sort of place it onto the bits you need and it will remove it you just have to leave it to soak I sort of uh, I was leaving it for sort of 20 30 minutes at a time leaving it to soak and then coming back and scrubbing it and then reapplying it and it worked wonders the only piece I haven't done is this front panel here so you can see this has still got paint all over the inside and paint on this side I'm going to leave this one because I have a replacement but uh, that would work just as well it just takes you know sort of about an hour to get the stuff soaked and removed so I'm very happy with how that is going we can now start putting this thing back together and making repairs it's always good to start with an easy repair because it means that you feel like you're sort of getting somewhere. And the easiest repair on this vehicle is to straighten these axles. You can see this axle is lovely and straight. This is the one that I got as a replacement, but these axles here at the back, they don't roll at all. They are pretty bent and sort of distorted. I'm guessing at some point the child sort of pushed down on the vehicle. So what we've got to do is bend these straight again. And if we can't bend them straight again, we can just buy a replacement metal bar. These are three millimeters in diameter and you can buy stainless steel bars of all sorts of uh, diameters so I have actually ordered some just on the off chance that I can't get these uh, straightened but I reckon we probably can all you're going to need a pair of pliers like this work out where the bend is so I can see there's a bend just about there I will grip that with the pliers like so and then I should be able to I'll just do it line this in up with the camera so you can see what I'm doing I then should be able to sort of start slowly bending this back and straightening it out just do a little bit at a time you can start rotating as well checking to see where the bends are that was a mild bend at that end we can see there's probably a bend at this end looks like this has bent a little bit further down so just sort of keep working your way along and at some point you'll start to feel that it it rolls smoothly in fact that one already feels like it's rolling a lot better I think that's smooth enough. Let's try it on this one. Initially, you can see that I can't actually roll this one. It's got quite a bend in it. So again, all we do is work out where the bend is. So it's just about there. So I'll grip that in the pliers. Just start applying some pressure. And we'll get that working. Just do it sort of a little at a time. You can always bend it too much and sort of bend it back again. But you'll be able to get something that's pretty straight. So there's another bend. I can see there's a kink about there just bend that back you just have to do it by eye there's no sort of precise way of doing this so take it a little bit at a time keep bending until you've got the uh, rod as straight as you can get it see already that is masses better so I'll just do a little bit more off camera and then we can put these wheels back on and see how well it rolls right so those are now all uh, as straight as I can get them they are rolling really quite nicely there was a little bit of rust on a couple of them so I've actually just taken some thousand quit sandpaper and just uh, given them a quick rub down you can see they look pretty uh, good they're looking I would say almost as good as new so I think the ones that I've ordered I don't need to use I can get away with using these so let's put these back into the vehicle so we're let's bring in the base and we can turn this over very simple to do these are very sort of soft rubber tires you can easily push the axles in and you push them through the holes like that push the other wheel on the other end and there we go one set of rolling wheels so we've got to do that a few times just because there's uh, three sets of wheels on this so there's a hole there as well that goes through like that put that wheel on and then the ones at the front and we'll turn this over and see how well the whole thing rolls along 
Okay, let's give that a roll. Oh yeah, that's feeling much better. That wheel at the front is just sticking a bit. I've probably pushed the uh, wheels on just a little bit too far. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that is rolling really very nicely indeed. So you can see it's quite easy to straighten the axles and now they're also nice and shiny. Even though you'll never see these, these are completely hidden inside. We know they are nice and shiny and looking as good as new. Now what I want to do is that just make a tiny repair on the front of this. You can see at some point uh, this has been played with rather a lot. There's a fair few scratches on the front and marks, but it's missing a piece here. So I think I'm just going to sort of carefully cut that out and make a little square of styrene stick that in just using some plastic wood and paint it green it probably doesn't need doing because you really can't see that from the front but i know it's there so i'm just going to do that just for a little uh, fix for myself just to make it look as tidy as it can be it's never going to be perfect because there's all of these wear marks and scratches on it but we might as well just repair that really obvious break Right, it's all done, it's all painted and it's all dry. And I just think it was actually well worth doing. I know it was only a little bit of damage, but when you turn this over, it was the first thing you saw, even though there's sort of scratches elsewhere, because there was a big piece missing. It was really pretty obvious. Now, have got a little bit of uh, plastic there, just painted green. I don't think anyone would particularly notice that. So I'm very pleased that I uh, took the time to do it. Now we can start putting this back together and it's just a case of reversing the process of taking it apart. The first thing we need to do is to uh, put the little uh, console piece back in. That fits in the front and is screwed in by two small screws on the bottom there. So uh, we'll get those screws put in and then we can start putting the uh, rest of this back together. Now we can screw this main piece into the bottom of the ATC and we have to put these little brackets back in. There are two of these, one that goes on either side and you can see they've got a little peg on them uh, and that peg needs to go towards the front of the vehicle. And this is a little bit awkward because you've got to sort of hold these in place. They don't clip in place. And so what we've got to do is uh, push them in place here. So they just sort of rest one on either side. So I'll put the other one on the other side. And then we have to put this inside the vehicle. So I'm thinking, probably the easiest way to do this is to hold everything upside down so if I rest them like that in the correct position and then we'll grab the bottom of the vehicle and we can just drop this over the top and hopefully they will stay in place which they haven't it's going to be awkward this one just because they don't really fit in place I was sort of thinking I could put a bit of glue or something on them just to hold them in but they were never glued in the first place so let's just try this so rest those down and put this over I think I got it that time. Let's see if I turn this over, have they stayed in place? They have, they are in the correct position. So now I can turn this over again and I'll put all the screws in the bottom of this. And that will be that set piece all back together.
Now that that's all screwed back together, we can put in the uh, rear bumper slash handle. So there's a hook piece on here, which goes upwards. And these two uh, little pegs just go in the holes at the back and it will then clip in place. And this, as I say, is sort of part bumper, part handle. So we just push that in. You'll hear it when it clicks like so. So you can now pull that out and that's uh, when it's in handle mode and you push that in and it's the rear bumper. So that is the bottom section of this ATC together. But we are missing one vital piece, which is this bar that goes across here, which is a sort of seat belt to hold figures in place. Uh, it's one of those pieces that is just always missing, but it's a very simple piece. And I think we can make that out of some uh, black styrene sheet. So uh, that is what I'm going to do. I need to take a few measurements just to work out how long this is and how thick these little holes are and we'll get cutting. Right, so I've just done a quick measurement and the distance between those two holes is 142 millimetres and it's about five millimetres deep. So I'm gonna cut a strip of a styrene sheet. This is actually one and a half millimetre styrene sheet. I think it should be thick enough and it's gonna fit perfectly in those holes. So I'm gonna cut a five millimetre strip of this off and then uh, sort of shape it to fit and add little brackets at the end so that it clips in place. Uh, the original bracket is very simple. It is essentially a bar with two posts that go down vertically off each end there is nothing much more to it so uh, I'm just going to sort of copy that and make my own version see what happens so um, yeah let's get cutting and shaping And this is what I've made. So that is a 142 millimeter long bar that is five millimeters wide. And I've made these little brackets at one end. So we've got two uh, pieces of styrene stuck together just to add a little bit of thickness because I didn't think that uh, a join with just some one and a half millimeter styrene would be quite strong enough. And this now fits in the two slots at either end. So if I get some figures, I can put those in the seats. Uh, the seats are a little bit awkward. They don't really fit in particularly well. I think that's because it's designed for a G.I. Joe figure and the Action Force figures are not quite as poseable, but we can still get them to sit down. So that clips in there and then the other end clips in like that. And there you go. Those figures are now held in place. And that, that's pretty much all the bar ever did. It wasn't a particularly complicated thing. But it means that as you move this around, they don't fall out. So that does all it needs to do. So we are getting pretty close to uh, getting this vehicle finished. There's just a few more pieces to put inside. We have the stretcher here, which I removed all of the paint off. I was thinking about replacing that little uh, post there, but it's so thin. I don't think anything I did would be uh, strong enough uh, to sort of hold it. So I'm just not going to uh, bother about that. We can just clip this in place. So there are some holes here over the uh, emergency medical sign so we can just uh, clip that down I think it just pushes in place like that we can then put the uh, front portion on so this is the replacement one that I managed to uh, source so that just clips on the front there over the figures like that and then we get this uh, back section and that clips over the top like that and there we go but we need to sort this out and all the missing pieces that go with it. 
Here is the gun turret and it is always missing pieces. There's supposed to be an aerial that sits in that very tiny hole there and a missile launcher that sits on the back here with four red missiles on it. Those pieces are always missing and are incredibly hard to get. But we have to say a massive thanks to Matt over at Kraken Creations because he makes replacements of all of those pieces. I will put all of his details in the description below. So if you need those pieces for yourself and other Action Force pieces, do check out his uh, website. So he has very kindly sent me those missing pieces. So in this bag here, we have the little bracket and a few other pieces, which I will show you in a minute. So this is the little bracket that holds all of the missiles. These are 3D prints that have then been sort of painted up to uh, match the original colors. So you can see we can put the missiles in the little sockets there. And then this piece clips in that little hole at the back. So hopefully this will just clip in. I haven't actually tried this. Oh, it's a tight fit, but there we go. Yeah, so that is the missiles stuck in there. You can see it's a fairly precarious looking thing. And that's probably why it is always missing. Then we need this little aerial. Matt also makes those. I have a bag here of different colored ones because these are used on lots of different vehicles. So we need to grab the little green aerial in there. And you can see how tiny this is. Very tiny indeed, and understandably why it always gets lost. So that little aerial goes in there. And that is the completed gun turret. So let's drop that onto the top of the ATC. So I'll bring the ATC in. We can pop that in place. It should just clip in. There we go. That is now looking really nice and complete. But there were some extra pieces in that packet, which are some custom pieces that uh, Kraken Creations makes, which are these. These are little sort of windscreen covers to make this fully armoured. And these just sit over the top like that. They are pretty cool. They don't clip in place. I don't think they just sort of rest on. Maybe we could glue them on or something like that. But they are a nice little addition if you want to customise your ATC. And so there we go. This is the completed version of the Action Force Armoured Troop Carrier. It's a pretty cool looking vehicle and I can see why lots of people want to get this in their collection. It just looks really nice. It's fairly beefy and it does act as a carrier as well. So you can fill it full of figures and you can carry it around using the handle on the back. So it's a pretty unique toy. It reminds me an awful lot of the Rebel Transport from Star Wars, which was also a toy and a carry case all in one. It's certainly been a fun project this one. When I started, I really was wasn't sure whether I would be able to get rid of all of that paint but as you can see I've managed to get most of it removed there's a little bit left around just in the odd sort of places but that adds to the sort of wabby sabby nature of this toy it's been heavily played with so there are a few scratch marks here and there but the overall effect is it looks really nice and it is very displayable and that's all that I want from a toy I know you could go a lot further with these sort of restorations do a lot more work to them but on something like this that's already been heavily played with I think just getting it into a displayable state is all that is needed Needed. As you can see, if I take this back off here, we've got those figures stuck inside with their little uh, seat belt place. I just think it's a, a really nice looking vehicle and I'm, yeah, I'm very pleased to have this in my collection. As you can see on this one, I didn't actually have to do any work on the stickers. I do have a rough scan of the sticker sheet. So at some point in the future, I will get to work on those and tidy them up and I will put those on toyploy.com. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I do try and put stickers for all the toys I work on available there. Uh, but in this instance, as I didn't particularly need it, I haven't got it ready just yet but I will get to it in the future. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to check out some of my other GI Joe and Action Force repair videos. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.